up? Welcome to Up and Under. I am Siv Nyesi and this is my co-host. Anton Taylor. I didn't forget your name. <laughs> you, you almost did. I, I can see there was a pause. Uh, let's, uh, I'm glad you didn't say Makazi or something like that. Oh. Let's go straight into by looking at this weekend's top tries. Well, a great, great bit of individual talent and maybe a little bit of a luck as well. Bowden Barrett with the chip. And then, I mean, he got a short guy. He got it just by the end of his fingers. That is a once in a lifetime try. What he did well was at the end, pretended as if he meant every single moment. <laughs> so he was like, Try that I loved is a guy who's an incredible guy who deserves all the praise and talent in the world, Sia Colisi, stepping Yanchis on his behind. Like Bobby Skinsat said, Yanchis is on the wrong dance floor. <laughs> but I think Yanchis was maybe, look, if I had a guy that big running at me, like Sia, I would also maybe pretend to like, oh, oh I lost my phone. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> well, pull your dance try for me was quite special. I mean, firstly, he showed a really clean pair of heels. And we saw it was made by a little bit of brilliance by Vili LaRue. And this could be, he hasn't been in the best round of form. It could be a sign that he is coming back you know, into his prowess. We'll have to see. Sergio Peterson, incredible try, bounces one, then puts it onto the foot by Fanda by Fanda grubbers it down and scores an incredible individual try. On the subject of great individual tries, Rika Ioni, he fended off, first he starts his try off by fending off Beast, all right? Huh? So and it was then, like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then he rounded about four guys. I mean, so, I mean, it was a complete try. It was like back, reminding me back of school days where the one team was just a super fast guy and they're just rounding you the whole time. I, I was that kid. I was the guy getting rounded. I have no doubt. Beast mode! Five to Klerk, uh, the moment in which the Stormers' uh, defeat was sealed, was unfortunately for us when Five to Klerk, that little man, stole the ball of Kubis van Veik, and I mean really showing some, some grit and some strength there. An incredible Beast Mode moment, Julian Sevier. I have never seen anyone bounce the same person twice. Like, Double no wonder, he literally went, one, severe, two, severe, twice, and then they scored the try. It's quite a severe bouncing that yes, the guy got. Th that's my joke, he just, he was cracked. On the subject of quite severe injuries, Rob Arnold almost took a life with his charge down. It was just, he's like a dragon from Game of Thrones, just like flying, like, and he was penalized, but I mean, it wasn't really his fault, because he just, when you're that big, you can't just, you know, stop. It's like a bus this, stopping. There's a John Mayer song. Gravity. Working against me. Liam Gill. Yeah. Incredible drop goal. And he is, he, you know, he's, he's a forward. Kicking the ball right through the middle. If I was him, I would have walked off the field. I would have dropped. Retire, ah, retire from rugby. Um, it's over. It's over. Another beast mode moment from that same game was Samu Karevi. He stepped inside, probably, you know, stepped about two, three guys. And then SP Maria from the Bulls, rest in peace because he got a massive bounce, was a victim of it. He was, he was victimized. Like, he got bounced twice as well. He got bounced by the player and by the grass. <laughs> For me, another beautiful moment was definitely the Cheetahs. 92 points. 92 points. That's like... That's cricket and that, cricket in a rugby That's match. cricket, man. It was incredible to see, and I can remember them being bottom of the log. Yeah. Beautiful rugby. I'm loving the Lions rugby, and I'm loving the Cheetahs rugby. Great for South African and international rugby. And on the radar. Well, having a look at what's on the radar, so let's talk about South African rugby's worst kept secret. Alistair Kutsia, a man from the blue and white, our new coach. What do you think? I think he's a great man for the job. He's a, he, what people do forget is that he actually was an assistant coach at, during the Jake White winning of the World Cup. People do forget that. So he knows what he's doing. He's been there. I'm looking forward to see what he can do if, if the style of rugby that he's been coaching in the blue and white can come through in, with, the, with the Springboks. For me, all I want to see is us giving the big W's. I want us to see win. I want us to see beautiful rugby. And I want to see I want to see Colby get to touch the ball at international level. On the subject of styles of play and styles of coaching, uh, you know, there's been quite a lot of discussions about the difference between New Zealand rugby and then South African and Australian rugby. And the Stormers, you know, we're playing only against Australian teams. And I think we saw this past weekend when he came up against the Lions that uh, we came a little bit short because they were throwing the ball around. So it's going to be quite interesting when we meet those New Zealand teams in the, in the playoffs. I, I really, I love watching New Zealanders play. I'm a proud South African, but that style of rugby, we cannot deny, is beautiful. If you think you're going to be able to kick to a New Zealand team and the fullback's going to catch it and he's going to miskick it to you, 
or he's not going to run it to you, those New Zealanders will run it back at you. The fullback will join the line between the centers and pass it right wide or pass it left. So I'm a bit worried about it, and I'm not just worried about it in the Vodacom Super Rugby, I'm worried about it in the Championship Rugby when we have to meet New Zealand and, the, uh, and Australia and Argentina. That's what I'm worried about, because for me, that's short term. Long term, I want to beat New Zealand there, and I want to beat them ag again and again and again and win the flipping World Cup in a couple of years. How about the best playing against not the best. Kenya versus Singapore Fiji. Sevens. Singapore versus Fiji was amazing. I'm, what? Not, I'm not saying anything negative about Kenya. I'm not mm. saying Kenya is bad or anything. Well, they're just not highly rated. Yeah, but know, they don't not, have the same ranking. How did it happen? Kenya beat... What a Cinderella story. It, it, Cinder, Cinderella story. Beautiful. Cinderella story. David and Goliath, you know. But, but I didn't see it coming. I was watching. I really didn't see it coming, but they really, really were on fire. That it, it looked like the Kenyans were not going to get stopped. It looked like... I think the Fijians underestimated them, you know, I think. And they could tell the, the, the Kenyans had a real fire in their belly. The Fijians didn't see it coming. Fijians have been playing some tough teams for the last yeah. three weeks. They've been playing some tough teams. But for me, Fijians are an incredible team. And for Kenya to beat them, the whole world was celebrating. I'm sure there were some Fijians celebrating their win. I, I, I'm sure even the Fijians didn't mind losing against Kenya. It was a beautiful story. I love seeing Africans doing well. I love seeing the underdog doing well. It reminded me of the uh, cricket T20 final, T20 with, with, the West Indies. with the West Indies. It was beautiful. Champion, champion, champion. That's a song I think. That's, uh, yeah, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> It's been a great show of Up and Under. It's been an incredible week of rugby. Let's be honest, this is why this game is played in heaven. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Got the handshake right. No, he didn't, but I let it slide. <laughs>